Tell friends, Beth with Thimble Hooks. Thanks for stopping by. And since our weather just does not want to cooperate and start being warmer, I decided to show you my favorite little mitten. It is my beer mitten, or a pop mitten, if you wanted to call it that. And it's super easy, it's really fast, and even a beginner can throw this together, and it's really fun. You can customize it to your team colors, school colors, just your favorite color in general. You can see I've made several of them here, and I have a pair that's almost done. So I decided that I would show them to you before I finished them up. So the base of it is super simple and super easy, very repetitive, so it's easy to catch on to. You see all these fun colors. This one I'm going to give to my brother. This one is fun, like Mardi Gras, it's fun. This one's just two-tone, no swirly colors. And there's my pink set, this one's mine. I love this set. It's bright and pink and obnoxious and I love it. So let's get started. They're really easy, I promise. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks! I have some colors that I think go together nicely, even though I'm not going to finish this one. I'm just going to show you the basics, and then we're going to finish off the one that I'm already making. But this is Red Heart Super Saver Turquoise. And this one is I Love This Yarn from Hobby Lobby. And this one is called Instant Classic, and it has everything in it. And I have a little bit left, and I love it. I want a 5 millimeter hook, and you can make this in a solid color if you want to. It's just easier to follow the pattern if you're using two colors. So the color that you start with is the one that's not going to show as much. So you can see this one is pink. Mostly pink right here and then there's a gray. And then there's pink and then there's gray. So the color that you want to show off, like this one I did here, because I really liked this yarn. And the brown is just kind of an accent. So the color that you want to stand out would be color B. We're going to start with color A. So I'm going to use the turquoise for color A. And my five millimeter hook, my trusty prim, my favorite baby. We'll make a slip knot and we want to chain 48 loosely because we're going to work into those little back bumps. So chain 48. Six, 47 and 48. So there's my long chain of 48. We're going to take our chain and flip it over. So you can see all these little back bumps, these ridges down the back. We are going to single crochet all the way down our chain. 47 single crochets. One in each of these little back bumps and I'll meet you back at the beginning. And 46 and there's my last back bump. Number 47. There we go. Number 47. Now working in those back bumps is a little bit more time consuming, but it's really important so you have a nice finished edge right here for when we want to close up our mitten and finish it so you can wear it since it's being made flat. This is the best way to do it so that it closes up very, very nicely. So you take the extra couple of minutes and make sure you do in those back bumps. But right now I'm going to change colors. So I want to pull this one back this very last stitch. We'll pull this one back so that we can finish this stitch with our new color. So we're going to do half of this stitch. Pull up your two loops and now change color. And I'm moving on to my Instant Classic. These were both four weights. Pretty typical yarn. Alright, we just finished that stitch with our new color so we're ready to rock on round two. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. And on the beginning and end stitch we always want to go through both loops. So go under both loops right here and do a single crochet. Now we are going to do back loops only. So our stitch count for row 2 is 45 back loops only, but the first one just always remember to do both loops. So there's number 1. Now we want to do the back loops only. So you can find those very easily. Right here there's both loops. There's your front loop. But we want to work in the back loops only. So 45 all the way down. I'm going to mark this first stitch. It is very helpful to have a bunch of stitch markers around. This is the way that we're going to do some shaping up here. Some of those stitches can get really tight. So grab some stitch markers too. We're going to do 45 back loops only. And there's number 44. 
and there's number 45. So we have two stitches left that we are not going to work on this round. You know what, I'm going to mark that last stitch too. The very last blue stitch, I didn't mark it the first time, so I'm going to do that now. Makes everything easier to have a little handful of stitch markers. Alright, now when we're going to move on to row 3, turn our work, but there's no chain, and we want to work underneath both loops and single crochet and mark this stitch believe me you're going to want to mark these stitches some of them get kind of disappear and then you'll be sad all right so this one is 25 so that was our first one and there's again back loop only 25 back loops only there's number three four five and 23 24 and 25 and those were all back loop only, except of course for the first one. So just remember that, but I'm going to say back loop only for everything. We're going to do the same thing again, turn our work, but no chain. And in our first stitch, we go under both and single crochet and mark that stitch. And now this one is 23 total, back down. So there was our first one, back loop only now, 23 total. 22 and 23. So you can see there's two stitches here that we didn't work. Two stitches left on this row that we did not work. So leave those for now and we're going to turn our work, no chain, and in our first stitch go under both loops and single crochet and mark that stitch because in a moment we're going to find all of these stitches. You're going to need them. Alright, so this row is 43, so we're going to work all the way back down. Back loop only again, so there was our first. And we want 43. And now we've got our first little grouping here. This is number stitch number 22. And this is stitch number 23. Now here's the tricky part. See, that was the one that was, look. That was the one that was marked. Very easy for that to go missing. So there are back loop only. That was stitch number 23. And now, you can take that stitch marker out for right now. Now in order to get back down here, because we've just ran out of stitches, there's this little bump right here, right here. You want to go through this loop and through the next stitch back loop. So we went through this green one and I went through this gold one. Yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch everything together. That's our stitch for that one. So we can jump down to this other row. So this one stopped, so we want to get back down here to where the gold was. So now we continue our back loops only. There's 41, 42, and there's our last stitch. And that's our last grouping for color B, which was my instant classic, right in here. So our very last stitch, we want to go underneath both loops, pull up both loops, two loops on your hook, and now we want to change colors back to our original turquoise. You just drop this color and pull up the other one. Don't make it too tight when you finish this stitch. Now you just finish that stitch, super easy peasy. So there's four rows of our mix color right here. Now we'll go back to our turquoise, chain one, turn our work. On the end we want to chain one. And then in our very first stitch we're under both loops. Remember that always on the end. On the ends it's always under both loops. Everything else is going to be back loops only. So now we're just going to go all the way down as soon as we get down here. I'll show you how we pull that all together. So we're going to go all the way down, 47 back loops only. And here we are, we're at our marked stitch. There's one, two more stitches till our marked stitch. There's my marked stitch. I'm going to go in the back loop, my single crochet, take that stitch marker out, and then we're going to work in this little bump, this little back bump right here, or little side bump, this little side stitch right here. Go through that stitch and through the back loop of the next available stitch in the row below. Yarn over, slip stitch through everything. 
And now we've got another marker, so we're going to do our back loop, single crochet. Take out that marker. Go in this little side loop right here again, under, and down to our next available loop through the back loop only. So we have three loops on our hook, yarn over, slip stitch through everything, and our very last stitch is marked right here with my pink under both loops for a single crochet. And that was color A again, and that's round six, or row six. We chain one and turn our work. I'm going to take out this guy because I'm going to move him up in just one second. Single crochet into our very first. Use whichever stitch marker you grab first. And then all the way down 47 stitches back loop only. But remember at both ends are both loops. We're going to call it back loop only so we can keep our stitch count. 47. There's number 46, and our last one, number stitch 47, we're going to go under both loops. And right now is when you would want to change colors again. Drop your turquoise and add the other one and finish that loop, and repeat. So our first part right here, this was just our base. Row 1 is not part of the repeat. Rows 2, 3, 4, and 5 are color B, and 6 and 7 all you do is put 47 of each one all the way down of that color. This is the wrong side and this is the right side. So you can see we have all ridges. This is pretty much just a nice ribbing. So it's pretty much unisex. It's going to fit almost anybody. If you have somebody who has really big hands, probably want to go up to maybe a five and a half hook, but probably not too much bigger than that. So you just repeat this seven times. Repeat our color B and color A, color B, color A, seven times. Now, I am not going to finish that on this one because I have a set that's almost done. And since I wasn't finished with it, I thought right now would be a perfect time to finish it. This is when it looks like when you have all seven rows done. So there was our base right here. That was just row one into our base row. But then I did my repeats seven times. B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. And then ending with color A, which was on the previous one was my turquoise. We want to end there. Now find your find the right side and the wrong side. You can tell one looks much nicer than the other. See, I call this one the wrong side because I can see some of these stitches right in here. And then on the right side, this one looks a lot cleaner. So whichever side you like best, I'm going to put that one on the bottom so that we can fold this up. Now we're going to close them up and we're back at our loop. And for this one, my colors are, this one is, I love this yarn again, which one are you? Green camel stripe, pretty, pretty straightforward camel. And I used um, Premier Just Yarn, and this color is probably top. Yep, this one is top, because I thought they went together very nicely, and it's very different than the other ones that I had made, like this pink one, and I had a bright purple one, so I thought this one would be fun. So now we're going to close this up and turn it into a glove, because right now it's black. All right, so here's my wrong side, and there's my right side. So I like to mark my first stitches, just so they're really easy to find. Once we fold this in half, just mark these really quick and to end up taking those out again in a second anyway, but we'll mark them anyway. And then I have my last stitch over here is marked. So when we fold this, our working yarn should be hanging out right here. And we want to go into our very first loop here that I just marked through that one, through the entire stitch and through the other side right like this, and yarn over, pull through both of them, and single crochet. And there's our very first stitch. I'm going to do that for 27 stitches all the way down. So now I can take this guy out. I'm going to go through both sides under both loops. So we're going to go through this stitch all the way, and the other side 27 times. 
total. So there's this is number three. And number four, all the way down, make do 27. And there's number 26 through both sides, and number 27. All right, so there's our 27. We just closed up our little cuff, our wrist. So now I'm going to do 18 single crochets just through this side. Just through this side. So there's number one. And I'm going to mark that stitch because I'll be able to find it in just a little bit. Do 18 under both loops. And there's number two, number three, number four, 17, and 18. Remember that was just on this one side, just on the side closest to you. And I have two stitches left. I want to go through both sides with those two stitches. So underneath both loops and then off to the other side for our last two stitches. So there's this one, single crochet, and there's my last stitch on this side, and this is the very last stitch on the other side, single crochet. So now we did one side and we closed it all up. Now we're going to turn our work. So we can go down the other side with our 18 on this side like we did on that side. And 17. And there's my last stitch is number 18. There, now we're all closed up and we're starting to work on the beer pouch. So now we're just going to be working around this opening. Everything else is done right now. I'm just going to work around the opening. So jump back over to our first marked stitch and single crochet. So I want to mark that stitch because that's our first one. Since we're working in the round, it's just a little bit easier. So the first stitch we just did, I just put a marker in it. Now we're going to work all the way around. So that would be 18 on this side, 18 on that side, 36 all the way around single crochets. There's number two, three, four, all the way around to the stitch marker. And there's number 34, 35, and 36. And we're back at our stitch marker. We went all the way around with the very simple single crochets. We're just working this up a bit right here. So the next round that I want to do, I'm going to turn over here. There's our first stitch. I'm going to double crochet into that first stitch and move our stitch marker. And our first set of stitches is 10 double crochets. So there's the first one. So the next 10 stitches are double crochet. Two, three, nine, and there's number 10. So we just did 10 double crochets right at the beginning. Right here, our first 10 are double crochets. Now we're going to do the next eight, our double crochet two together. So we're going to reduce a little bit. So yarn over, go through the next stitch, pull up three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two, and now yarn over and go through the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, pull up, four loops on our hook, pull through two, three loops on our hook, now pull through everything. That is a double crochet two together. Let's do that one more time. We're going to do a total of eight of those and that was number one. So go through the first stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through three. So you're reducing a little bit right here. So what we're doing is not finishing this stitch and we're going to start another double crochet at the same time and pull them all together. So there was number three. We want eight of those. There's number seven and here's my last one. Pull through but don't finish. And there's number eight. All right, so we reduced a little bit at the end right up here. And now we're going to do ten more 
double crochets just like we did on the other side. So it's a mirror image. Ten more double crochets should take you back to your stitch marker. Eight, number nine, and there is my tenth double crochet. Back to my stitch marker. So we're just building this up a little bit because this is the part that's going to hold our chosen beverage. Now the next three rounds is just double crochet all the way around. 28 double crochets all the way around times three rounds. So there's my first stitch. I'm going to mark it. I want to do that three times all the way around. No reducing, no, no nothing. Just double crochets. And I'll meet you back here in just a second after my three rounds of double crochet are done. My last couple stitches and my three rounds of double crochet are complete. Hooray! See, it's getting much taller pretty quick. Really, really quick. Now this is our last round before we just start weaving in our ends and closing up shop. So one more round. There's our first stitch. Just a single crochet all the way around. Back to the stitch marker. So 28 single crochets. There's my last couple stitches and so now I'm done with the main body of this. So we're just going to slip stitch into our marked stitch and fasten off. And fasten off, just pull this through. So there's our base. There's everything. We're all done. Is what that is. Ah, is this right here. So we're just going to take out our stitch marker and tuck this in. You can weave in this end whenever you want to. It doesn't even matter. If you don't feel like weaving it in, it doesn't matter because it's never going to show. So that's how that works. However, this is still open, right? So all you need to do is find a little needle and a little piece of our yarn. So we're going to cinch that closed. So I'm just going to cut a nice little chunk Nice little swatch here. Bam. Probably could have been a little longer, but that's what I'm going to use. So now we'll just turn this inside out really quick. Turn this inside out so we can close up this little opening here. Otherwise your hands are cold. That's no fun. So just start going back and forth. Very simple, all the way around until you catch up with your original end. All right, I just met back up with my other one. I'll just go one more. Got my needle, and now just pull this closed. Pull that closed and tie it in a knot. Make sure it's nice and secure and it won't pop open. That's never going to come undone. And I'll just cut these off. Snip. Now we're inside out, so grab everything, pull it back through. So now it's right side out again. The only thing left to do is weave in a few ends. So we'll put this on, tuck that inside, and this is the part that keeps your hand warm with your drink whatever drink you're going to be using. But I also have the other hand glove if it's a really cold day and that's even easier than this one. So tune in next time and I will show you how to make the matching glove because this set is almost done. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimblehooks and stop back soon. Thank you. Bye.